Hello, and welcome to Harmony United Methodist Church for our virtual online worship service this weekend, the weekend of May the 17th. I am Jeffrey Zalatoris, the pastor here at Harmony, and today I'm joined with Elaine Stuckey providing music, Tammy Hamilton being our liturgist, and David Elliott for offering technical production. We are glad that you can join us today, that we may celebrate and worship God in this time. And I'd like to share with you uh, an announcement we have, that we are continuing to plan to share our virtual online worship as our primary source of worship through the month of May. And you can continue to receive this by Facebook and YouTube. And as long as Berkeley County remains a, a hot spot in the state of West Virginia, I personally believe the risks are too great for us to gather in the church for worship, and that the requirements are also too great for us to offer the quality of worship we would like to offer. Yet this past week, Harmony launched our re-entering committee, and we began the difficult work of preparing for that day when we do return, that we understand how we return safely into the space and can offer the quality of worship we have come to expect here. So I ask you to continue to keep us in prayers as a congregation and to pray for that re-entering committee as they make decisions for us moving forward. I also invite you to join us on our Wednesday evening Zoom Bible study and prayer time. And if that's something you would like to participate in, but you're a little unsure about using Zoom and you'd like a chance to practice, well, tomorrow on Mo or on Monday, um, there will be two times during the day, one at 9 a.m. and one at 3 p.m., that I will be launching a Zoom application for those who just want to try it out. If you'd like to join one of those, you can find the contact information on our church's website events page. And with that, if you have any prayers, joys, or concerns you would like to share with the congregation worshiping during our premiere time, feel free to type those prayers and concerns and joys into your Facebook messaging during the morning uh, service on Sunday. So let us now prepare our hearts for worship with music.
join with us in the call to worship. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him and extolled him with my tongue. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But, but truly, God, God has listened. listened. He, he has, has given heed to the words of my prayer. prayer. Amen. Amen. And now join me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see the weak and tired. Open our ears to hear the cry of the dismayed and wounded. Open our hands to minister to the lost and broken. Spirit of God, move among us. Give us hearts to serve and unite us to you and the body of Christ through grace, hope, and compassion. Amen. to us from the book of Acts chapter 17 verses 22 through 31. Hear these words. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God, what therefore you worship is unknown. This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that what they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. 
Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue our scripture readings this morning in John's Gospel, the 14th chapter. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a, in a while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Thanks be to God. I will not leave you as orphans. Jesus told his disciples just hours before the time of his capture, less than a day before his act of ultimate sacrificial love on the cross. Friends, we continue our movement this Easter season watching how Jesus' disciples moved from that somber morning, the witness of the women beside the empty tomb on Easter, to the time of the loud and raucous celebration of the disciples in the crowd on Pentecost. And as these weeks have passed by and we move a little further through this season of Easter, we experience ourselves a bit of what those disciples experienced. We are reliving through the word of the scriptures 
They move from the fear and the surprise that Easter morning to the confidence and the courage that the disciples would display on Pentecost. And along the way, we've been reminded of Jesus' words, words he had used to prepare the disciples, preparing them for his departure in death and for his return in resurrection. This week, we again are reminded that Jesus prepared the disciples both for that departure and a second departure. For the words we heard today, prepare the disciples for the day of Jesus' ascension, the day that we celebrate in one week ourselves. And his words prepared the disciples for the day of the arrival of the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost that we celebrate in just two weeks. Indeed, Jesus gave two promises to his disciples. The first, that he would leave and return to them. And the second, that he would leave and send another advocate. With these promises, Jesus told the disciples, I will not leave you orphaned. And so for us today, that promise continues. God did not leave us orphaned. God is with us. The Holy Spirit, our advocate, our companion, our comforter, our helper, moves among us even to this day, nearly 2,000 years after that promise was made. That, that is worthy of declaring, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Magnificent God, open our hearts and our minds to the works of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And in the work of the Holy Spirit, through the stories of God's sightings, we share with one another. Holy Spirit, you help us more than we can know. How can we help you today? Amen. Beloved, there are times in life when we are faced with decisions where there is no right answer. There are times in life when we are faced with decisions that no matter what we do, we will cause harm. There is truth that there are times in life, no matter what the actions we take or the actions we do not take, someone will be harmed. Sadly, that is the reality of our time. We are living in an unprecedented time. For we live in a time of having both a pandemic that is raging around the world, while at the same time we have medical and scientific tools being applied to develop tests and treatments and vaccines. Now, pandemics have happened throughout history, and truly there is nothing new or unprecedented in that. And this COVID-19 epidemic truly deserves the title pandemic, having already claimed more than 300,000 human lives around the globe, and having infected more than one million persons in just the last two weeks alone. This should be sobering to us. Because these numbers are only this low, because many nations have attempted to prevent the spread of disease, both here in the United States and beyond. Yet today, four and a half million people around the world are known to have been infected, despite efforts to slow the spread of this illness. This is a pandemic. And I can't imagine how much worse things would be if we were not trying to slow this down. And because hundreds of thousands of people in this country are actively sick from this virus, we are not, we are not out of the woods. Yet we live in a time of pandemic when there is medical and scientific potential that some cure may be just around the corner, yet truly just around the corner is not days or weeks, but possibly years, maybe months from now. We must be honest with ourselves in this unprecedented time. Yet we do know the efforts taken to slow the spread of illness have costs. 
Many jobs are gone. Many families have lost income. The gap between the wealthy and those in poverty has become worse. The stress takes its toll. Addictions and access to addictive substances does not slow down in this time, but under stress, addictions ramp up. Under stress, household domestic abuse continues, but, be, but is now hidden from view. And mental and emotional illnesses rise both with, within the healthcare workers who are overwhelmed trying to fight this illness, and in those who are in shock finding themselves unemployed. We live in an impossible moment. No matter what we do and what decisions we make, someone is being harmed. There is no easy answer as to how to go forward. We must be honest and admit that. This is a heart-wrenching time because no matter what decisions we make, somebody is harmed and the decisions being made on national and state and even county levels will result in more illness and death on the one hand, or job losses, addictions, and domestic abuses rising on the other. We do not accept that illness and death is appropriate. We do not accept that emotional illness, rising addiction, or domestic abuse is appropriate. And so in this time, it is not a time that we should be fighting against one another, but it is a time of sorrow and anguish. It is a time like the time when Job, in the Old Testament story, found himself sitting on pot shards, wearing sackcloth, wailing in agony because of the loss all around. It is a time to make anyone feel alone, even orphaned. In the story of Job, Job felt betrayed by friends and abandoned by God. Job experienced economic devastation, the death throughout his family, the crumbling of his lifestyle. Job experienced emotional abuse from his spouse and betrayal from his friends. Our Christian response, though, is not to join in the abusing and the betrayal. It is not our response to join in false political voices that want people to fight one another. Job's life was not renewed when he fought against his friends or family. Job's life was only renewed when he truly returned to God. So our Christian response in this difficult time is to return to God for hope. Our Christian response is to look for anyone, any out there who are vulnerable and those who are suffering. For Christ did not call on disciples to jump into political divides, but called on disciples to feed my lambs, tend my sheep, look out for the least and the last, the lost and the lonely. Our Christian response is to ask, God, there is so much suffering in our time. How can I help reduce that suffering? As mature Christians, our work for God is, is to take place outside the walls of the church's building. And amazingly, in our time, we can do things that could not have been done in the disciples' time. We can connect to one another by computer. We can share videos and images on Facebook. We can talk on the telephone. We can fellowship and worship in ways far beyond anything Paul could have imagined or dreamt, even when Paul spoke before the crowd in Athens. In our time, asking, how can I help, might lead us to reach out to another person by phone, by email, by Skype, asking, how can I help, takes us outside the building. The disciples did not have a church building, yet the disciples did God's work, inviting people to listen and to follow Jesus. 
Paul did not build glorious houses of worship in Athens, yet Paul lived and worked among the people. He did God's work inviting them, inviting them to listen and follow. So today I am, I am thankful that we can be both safe and protective of one another and that we can still minister in mission and outreach and worship and fellowship beyond the walls of the church. So even while we continue to be the hearers of God's word and the people of faith, beloved, we here at Harmony are beginning to plan for the day when we can assemble again within the church walls. We do not have a date set for this, and, and we do look to the guidance of our public health officials in the state and the county for that guidance. And today, the, our health department in Berkeley County tells us it is still not yet safe to assemble and gather, but that day may not be far off when that guidance changes and so we are making preparations for that day. Yet until that day comes, we can feel alone and separated. And I know we can feel discouraged when we don't gather with our church family because I feel that. And I know we can feel like we are missing something when we don't gather together on a Sunday morning in the church building. I feel that too. Yet I trust that God does not want us to suffer alone or to be orphaned. Because scripture taught us Jesus knew his disciples could feel alone. Jesus knew the disciples might feel rejected if he had not prepared them for his departures. Jesus did not want the disciples to feel as if God had departed from them. Jesus did not want disciples to lose their hard-earned faith by saying that their helper, their confidant, their advocate was gone. Jesus did not want the disciples to feel like they had no one to turn to in the time of trouble or facing insurmountable barriers. Jesus did not want the disciples to feel like Job. Indeed, Jesus gave the disciples reasons for hope. He gave two promises to the disciples about his coming departures. First, he told the disciples he would leave, and he promised to return. Now we know on that Friday he did leave by way of the cross and the tomb. Jesus was taken from the disciples, yet even unbelievably to those prepared disciples, Jesus indeed returned as he promised. That Easter, that day of resurrection, the risen Christ walked and visited the women and the disciples. Fulfilling his, fulfilling his promise to return, Jesus gave the disciples reason to believe and be faithful so that when Jesus would depart next, they would not lose faith or hope. For in his second promise, Jesus again told the disciples he would leave, saying, in a little while, the world will no longer see me. Yet he promised, God will give you another advocate. And that advocate will be with you forever. Jesus not only promised that God would continue to bless them and be with them, as Jesus had been with them for months and years, but Jesus promised that God would give another advocate for them forever. And hear that word, another. For with that word, another, Jesus promised to give the disciples one who is his own equivalent. And on the Pentecost day, that promise would be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Jesus promised to give the disciples the advocate. Jesus promised us that as Christ-following disciples, his very equivalent, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, goes with us all our days. Jesus offered these promises and Jesus confidently told the disciples, I will not leave you orphaned. 
and he fulfilled that promise. And for you and for me today, Jesus empowers us with faith, hope, and love by telling us the same, telling us, I will not leave you orphaned, for the Father gives you another advocate to be with you forever. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is with us. We need not be in panic or fear. We need not press for false divisions among people. For with the Holy Spirit, we have the power of self-control, the power of perseverance. We can ask Jesus to help us do the work of God, feeding the sheep, tending the lambs. We can check on our neighbor, bring food to the hungry, listen to the pain of a friend. We can seek out the last, the least, and the lost. We too can ask for the help that we need. If we are alone, if we are lost, if we are facing a shortage of food, call on one another, call on the church, call out for the Holy Spirit. For we can ask the Holy Spirit to remove anxiety from our hearts. We can ask the church to pray for us. We can ask one another to share a meal. We can ask Jesus to care for us as we care for the lost, the least, the last, and the lonely. Beloved, you have heard the good news. You have received the Holy Spirit. You, beloved of Christ, you have not been orphaned. So live faithfully, live faithfully according to this good news. Amen.
continue our time of worship in prayer, please join in this moment of prayer. For everyday faith and hope in God to inspire us and be our gift to family and neighbor, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For God's wisdom and guiding light to pierce through the mire and fog of this world, we pray. Christ, have mercy. For all of us who have sinned and fallen short of the image and likeness of God, to confess our sins, transform our lives to reject sin, and be thankful of God's forgiveness, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For God's healing mercies and grace on the sick and wounded, and for God's comfort of families and friends who cannot visit their loved ones, we pray. Christ, have mercy. And for the joys in our life that we lift before God, and for the concerns weighing on our hearts, minds, and souls, we take this moment to call them to mind. Bless our petitions with your compassion, we pray. Lord, have mercy. And friends, we celebrate the peace of Christ in your lives and with one another at this time. I will offer, again, the American Sign Language sign for peace be with you, Tammy. Peace be with you. And for those watching, I'll offer as well, peace be with you. We are a thankful people. We are a thankful people. We offer one another the peace of Christ. We have shared our gifts with one another, and in this time, we give thanks to God for all that God has offered us, all the blessings we have received. And we take a time today to return a portion of our gifts to God so that we might serve where God has called us as Harmony Church to serve. I invite you this week to take time to submit an online donation or to send a check into the church that we may continue our ministries here. Let us pray our offertory prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you for the life you have granted us, for the talents you have bestowed in us and the mercy you have shown us. We offer you the sacrifice of our praise and our love, and in thanksgiving, for what you have given us, we offer you the first fruits of our labors. May our offering be pleasing to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. And join together as we proclaim with the confidence of the body of Christ, redeemed by his grace, that prayer that Jesus taught us to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy be name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Beloved, when the world around us looks like suffering and pain, let us ask that question, God, how can I help? May you be blessed this week, then. May you witness the goodness of God. And may you witness God's signs in your everyday life. May you bear and bring that witness of grace into the lives of those around you. And may the triune God who creates, redeems, and sustains us bless you, forgive you, and secure your hope in everlasting life. Amen.